Hi everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man here. In today's episode, we're going to look at a fun little card game from 2014 by Wargy Studios. It plays two to seven players. It is called Peasant Buffet. And in this game, you are villagers in this game and monsters are trying to attack you and gobble you up. But what you can do is in this game, you can actually find articles that actually help kill the monsters. Once you have five monsters in your arsenal, you are dead. Dun, dun, dun. Just as simple as that. It's pretty much a press your luck card game where every card you flip up, if it's an item, you can choose to just take it and keep it. Or you can try to press on for more items. Because each peasant has certain items that will give them points at the end of the game. And it also helps you kill some of the monsters. Because the monsters have a certain thing where if it's a sword or something along the lines that you might find, that they can be killed by that. And that way you can still keep the loot that you found. So let's get on over to the gamer's table. And I will show you how to play Peasant Buffet. Okay, here we are at the gaming table, and here is Peasant Buffet. You can see not much to it, just a bunch of cards. So you have the box right here, you have your instruction booklet right here, which is very easy to read, and then you also have the peasant cards that are the Le Bones cards here, and these are the village cards. Let's go ahead and put these two aside. And how you're going to start off is you're going to take the peasant deck, which looks like the little skeletons, and what you're going to do is everyone's going to choose a peasant. But do you get to pick your own? No, you don't. What you do, well, you don't get to choose which one you want. What you do is you're going to go ahead and shuffle these up, and then you're going to go ahead and say, okay, you choose, you choose, you choose. So you blindly get to choose which one you want, because each one of these has a special power that you can have during the game. Now you'll see, like, the bard. Okay, I'll show you this one here. Okay. His special ability is dis discard a doom card to change the target of another doom card. Then you have this one, discard two items to negate an event card. And then you got the Wargy Knights, it says you score two points for surviving. So I'll go over this stuff, and each one of these peasants has items that they're going to try to collect in the game. So for instance, the Engineer, if he wants a sword and a treasure chest, those are going to be the two items he's going to be looking for in his inventory. For each one of these you have in your inventory, you get one point for. So you're definitely going to be looking for those. So each player is going to go ahead and choose, you know, their... Peasants, and there we go. You're going to go ahead and put the rest of these in the box. All right, you don't longer need those. Now, we go on to these cards here. Now, these are the village cards. And what you're going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and show you the five different village cards that are in the deck. First one is the item cards. Okay, they have a green backing to them. These are the items that you're trying, or they call them loot, when you, when you, start, you, know, when you start putting the cards out here. You're trying to collect these items. For instance, the burglar, a sword is one of the items he's looking for. So this item would be perfect for him. He would get one point for getting this in his inventory. Same with the engineer. He likes the sword as well. Okay, so he'd be going for that as well. Okay, so these are just items that you can either pick up to get points, or there's some monsters in the game that you can use this in order to kill it, which I'll go over a little later on. So you got the green backing. Those are the item cards. Then you have the yellow cards. These are event cards. What happens with these is when one of these is brought up, you do whatever it says immediately. So in this case, you got You Smell Delicious is the name of this one. And it says, take a monster from another player. Okay, so I'll go over the monsters in a second here. But these are the event cards that have a yellow backing that you do right away as soon as they get put on the table. Then you have the red doom cards. And these ones... Or go into your inventory. So these will go into your inventory. Each one of these does something different. This says Treasure Hunter on it. And it says, collect the current loot on the table. So this is a pretty powerful one. So you have a lot of loot on the table. You can actually snag that loot from another player. Okay. Then you have a monster. Now the monster cards have a black outline to them. And these ones you do not want. If you end up collecting five of these, you loot. Well, actually, you die. <laughs> so and your game ends. So you definitely want, do not want to get a monster, okay? And what these monsters do, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, 
If you have that, then you are able to destroy that monster. And then you get to keep the loot that you were drawing, which I'll go over the drawing part in a second. So it does tell you if you have this certain item that you can kill the monster. And then you can keep the loot. Okay? And then the boss monster. I had to pick this one for obvious reasons. Uh, for Mia, our pug that we recently, uh, unfortunately she recently passed away last August. So I saw this and I'm like, I have to choose this one to show as the boss. This is Pugs Malone. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so these are the boss monsters. Now these ones count towards everyone. So if one of these gets put up, this stays face up on the board and it counts towards everyone's count. So say I had two monsters in my deck after I tried to push my luck and then I lost. This would go towards my count. So now I have not only the two in front of me, but this one counts as a third for me and for everybody else. So the boss monsters are big. And you can see, you can also kill the boss monsters, but you can see it's going to take, on this one, three different items to kill this boss monster. And what's cool about this is everyone can contribute in trying to kill the boss monster. So maybe one person has the booze, and you know one other person has an outhouse, and the other person has an outhouse. You guys can combine your powers to kill the boss monsters. But then again, these are items you might need to get points. So it's something you got to think about and, uh, and go from there. So those are the five different cards you have in the deck. So let's just say, and then what you you do have a, a discard pile that goes right here. Let's just say it's the burglar's turn. He's going to go ahead and start drawing cards. This is what you're going to do. You're going to draw the first card, and it's booze. Okay. So you can see now you can stop right there, or you can continue on. Okay. This you can tell here the burglar needs a sword and an outhouse. So obviously he's going to keep going because the, the booze doesn't do anything for him. He goes ahead and draws a second card, and we got a yellow card. It's an event card. It says, place this card on top of one card in your inventory. The hidden card cannot be stolen, reshuffled, or discarded. That's really awesome. So if you have something that you really want to keep, let's just say, um, let's see, what's, uh, I won't, say you had a sword here and you don't want to lose it, then you can actually place that card on top of one of your things. So that's actually pretty cool. This is actually a pretty cool event card here. Okay. So that's something you would do right away, all right? That's something you would do. So you put it right there, okay? Then you would continue to draw if you want to continue. Now you have a treasure chest, okay? He probably wants to keep going because neither one of these items is on his thing, so he's going to go ahead and draw another one. Oh, he gets Scruffles. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a real terror, a terrible, uh, terrible monster there, right? So if he draws a monster, that means he gets to keep that monster, okay? Now he has one monster against him now. And he loses the loot. So the loot goes over to the discard pile. Okay. And then the next player goes on, which is the bard. He's going to say, okay, oh, we got a monster right away. And he got the, what is she called? The Vladette. There you go. So, she gets, so he gets this monster here. Okay. And then and so on. So what you're going to do is like, say, hit the next player, draws, take every monster in the discard pile and place them in your inventory. That is a bad card. Holy cow. If you have a big stack here and you got five of them in there, you're automatically going to lose. Oh my gosh, that's a, t that's a tough one. So he would have to go ahead and play that immediately and go through here and see you got the... Yeah, you would have the, the boss monster here and the alley and Zephy. You'd have a couple of them. You'd have to take those out and put them in your stack there. And then you get to continue on if you choose, try to do so. Here's another event card. All male peasants must discard one item. All male peasants must discard one item. So, wow, so that's pretty tough there. So all the male items, we're going to have to get rid of one item. And then you say, okay, there's gold. Say he decides to stop. This is the engineer's. He decides, actually, this would come out because this would be an event card. That would go right away. And let's just say he wanted to go ahead and go again. He gets another treasure chest. He says, okay, I'm going to stop. So he gets to go ahead and take these two and place them in his inventory. And, of course, he wants those because he has the treasure chest. So he gets to keep two of these, okay? And that's pretty much how the game goes. You're going to go around in a clockwise fashion, and you're going to press your luck. You're going to play. Do I want to play again? I want to play again. Okay, I want to play again. You want to play another one? You decide whether you want to keep going or stop. And then once you get the, if you get a, a monster, then you lose all the loot unless you're able to kill the monster with the booze. So let's just say, for instance... Like I told you before, let's just find a monster that has, let's see, 
a gold chest. So let's say this player here was drawing, okay, and he drew the monster, the prosecutor, but all it needs on this one is the treasure chest. He can say, say this was like this. Say it was like this, and he drew the third card. Oh, he gets the ghost. Or, I'm sorry, ghost. <laughs> the monster. What he can do is he can take one of these and say, okay, I'm going to kill that monster. So he takes this, he kills the monster, goes in the discard pile, and he gets to keep the loot because he killed the monster. So that actually worked out for him. It's all the same thing. And there you go. And then that would be the end of his turn. But if you can't kill the monster, then obviously you lose all the loot and it goes into the discard pile. And you go on and around and around until one, until everyone, um, like one player gets five, um, one, one player gets five monsters, that player is out. Maybe this player would have five monsters, this player has five monsters, one person still remaining, obviously would still have one last turn, and then the game would end. Now, what's interesting is even if you died early, you still get points for all the items you have. So even if you died early, you might still get points. You might still win the game. I mean, you might have like this player, say this player might die, and when you die, you flip it over. That's when you, when you, when you die when you get all five. But I might have three points over here. Maybe everyone has two, two, and one. I would still win the game because I have the most points. That's the interesting point. But you don't want to forget, if you do survive, okay? Say you play the game and you survived, you do get one point for your player. Unless your player has a special ability where if I stay alive, you're worth two points. So that they do have those cards in there. So you got to make sure you read the little, what is the, uh, like here... Yeah, see this one here. The Wargy Knights, you score two points for surviving. So if he survives, he gets two points for surviving instead of just the normal one point. So for instance, if this was the end of the game and the engineer stayed alive, this would be four points. Three for the gold and one for surviving. All right, and there you have it. So that is Peasant Buffet. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's a cute little game. It's a really cute little game. With all, I love, Like I said, I love the art. It's really, really great. And, uh, yeah, let's head on over to the gaming room, and I'll tell you what I think about the game. Okay, so my final thoughts on Peasant Buffet, the cutthroat pressure luck card game. I like the art. Look at the art. It, it's fun. You know, it's really, really fun. I like it. Comes in this little box. Uh, the one thing I don't like is it opens from the side. I these Games that open from the side worry me, because see the way it opens on the side? That eventually is going to get all messed up. I mean, I'd rather have it from the top, but it actually opens on the side. So that's kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like that too much. But any other than that, I mean, that's a minor thing. The game itself I like. It's a really nice, fun, light game where you get like three or four friends. You go, hey, you want to play some peasant buffet? See if you get eaten by a monster? I mean, yeah, how fun. You know, and you're doing the pressure luck thing. And eventually, every card that gets drawn, you're like, <gasps> you know, you're holding your breath every time to see if that person gets a monster or not. Of course, if you get the boss monster, then it goes against everybody on the table. So that, so especially with somebody that has four monsters in their hand, they're hoping and praying you don't get that fifth monster shows up, and then they're gobbled up, and then they're dead, and then you don't get the extra point for surviving, or the two points, depending on which person you choose. I do like that when you're a peasant, you don't get to choose what peasant you're going to be. You kind of get the cards here, which I like the little, see the little skeletons? I love those things. Those are cool. But, I mean, you actually kind of go like this. Okay, pick. So you don't get to choose what peasant and what little power they have with it. So that makes it pretty fun. And there's a lot of peasants in here. I mean, there's, I don't know how many there are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You have 14 peasants in here. So you have a 3-4 player game. You can play this three times and never have the same, you know, not have the same peasant. Um, at the same, uh, you know, when you're sitting down. So I think the replayability on that is actually pretty cool. Because every game... You can play this 14 times with 14 different peasants, and it'll be a completely different game each time. That is great. And uh, just some of the art. I, I do like, like I said earlier, I like the artwork. I mean, look at the, the witness. I mean, the little one-eyed monster. I mean, it's fun. It's not serious art, and I like that. It's not all dramatic and serious. I, I love it. I love the way it looks. And, uh, you know, it just it is fun. I look at the mechanics. You know, these little alien guys almost looks like Stitch, you know, from Disney. But anyhow, um, I highly recommend this game. I think it's fun. If you want a little light, fun card game with a few friends on a Sunday afternoon and you're just kind of chilling, hey, let's play some Peasant Buffet. Break it out and just have some fun with it. It probably takes about 20 to 30 minutes. I don't think it actually has a time frame on here. 
You know what? It doesn't, actually. It's kind of interesting. Usually games always have a time frame. They do not have a time frame on here. So, I would say probably about 20, 30 minutes, depending on how many players you have, though. I mean, if you have, like, six players, it might, it might take a lot longer for everyone to get killed. Because eventually, all of you are probably going to get killed in this game. Probably. It's a pretty good... Unless you're the last one standing and you get one last turn to see what you want to do. Maybe get me any more points. Because you're going to know how many points each player has as the game progresses. Because, like I said, in the, in the turning the game, it actually does tell you, the peasants here, you know, what are the items that you're getting points for. And you might, I mean, you might not. I mean, if you can see how many points each person has, you might go, well, you know what, I need to kind of press my luck a little bit, see how many items I can get, and then uh, see if you can blow past that first place person with maybe a couple more items and you can win the game. But anyhow, I highly recommend it. I give a thumbs up. It's a fun little game, very light game, and uh, trying to go up against the monsters, not trying to get gobbled up by them, I think it's a cool little concept. So definitely, if you can find it, it I found it for a pretty decent price. Um, I, I think I found it for under 10 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. I think I found it for like 5 or 6 I think. So you can find it pretty good. It's back in 2014. So it's been around a little while. Uh, at the time of filming here, it's been out, what, 8 years? It's 2022, so about 8 years it's been out. So you can find it for a pretty decent price. And this was brand new. This was sealed when I got it. So that was a brand new price. So, um, well, if you liked the episode, which I hope you did, uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I would really love to have you as a subscriber. And until next time, everybody, happy gaming.